Hello everyone, welcome to the second session on the classification of phylum mollusca. We have already seen that phylum mollusca is classified into seven classes, a placophora, polyplacophora, monoplacophora, gastropoda, pelicipoda, scaphopoda and uh, cephalopoda. Right. So among that, the first one, class Aplacophora, and this presentation here we will see the detail on the class Aplacophora and one example to uh, represent the particular group. Okay, class Aplacophora. If you see, the term has come from uh, the Greek words uh, without play to bear, a plax ferine. Okay, so these are the Greek words from a plax ferine, which means without plate to bear. So it doesn't bear any plate. That is our meaning. Okay, what does the plate here refer to? It is the shell. So these, uh, the members of class a placophora in are without any shell. Okay, so that is the simple one. They are worm-like, they are primitive, they are vermin form, they are uh, exclusively marine, bottom-dwelling mollusks. Okay, so uh, the vermiform body, you can see it is a, a typical example, vermiform body. They are found in a marine ecosystem, usually bottom dwelling towards the bottom floor of the seas and oceans. And uh, uh, they are, uh, you can see here, uh, they don't have any representatives from freshwater ecosystem. Okay, uh, as the name indicates, it lacks a shell, but it bears calcareous spicules or scales. Spicules or scales, uh, actually it is uh, produced by the mantle itself, just like the shell of any other mollusks. Here you can see that the aplacophorans do have uh, mantles secreting the calcareous spicules. Okay. These spicules may be seed like structures or it may, uh, what you call, be um, modified to form scale-like structure that covers their entire body. Okay, so uh, these spicules or the scales, usually they are arranged all throughout the body. You can see here the whole structure, it is actually the spicules or CT covering completely the, covering the whole um, skin, right, the outer body covering. Right, and this gives them a sheen, a, a, a what you call a, a shining uh, appearance, and uh, that is uh, because of the spicules present on their outer body covering. Okay, now looking into the other structures, we can see they are, as we already mentioned, uh, they are very form, they are long, narrow, they are bilaterally symmetrical, but with poorly developed head. And uh, uh, but well differentiated mantle and foot, usually with a well differentiated mantle and foot. Okay, so they, we can uh, well differentiated uh, head region is absent. We can we may not be able to uh, see a proper differentiated, highly defined head region. As I already mentioned, body is completely covered by a skin that is supported by numerous uh, minute calcareous spicules or, uh, or the scales. Okay, these calcareous, calcareous, it could be argonite uh, uh, in the case of placophora. Now, the um, elementary canal, if you see, it is straight and uh, well differentiated with a large digestive sac. In most cases, you can see the radula in the buccal cavity and uh, uh, the style sac in the intestine is uh, observed. But in some cases, what happens is the radula may be absent. Okay, in those all, uh, members, we can see that the buccal cavity functions as a sucking pump. Okay, so we can uh, see that radula may or may not be present. If the radula is present, it may be present in the buccal cavity just like any other mollusks. Okay, and there would be a style sac in the intestine. But in those groups which members which don't have a radula, in those, uh, we can see that the buccal cavity, it functions as a sucking pump. Okay, it sucks up the contents. Now, uh, heart, it is bilocular in nature. Bilocular in the sense it is composed of two uh, chambers, a, a single auricle and a single ventricle forms the heart. Okay, now, uh, the uh, 
uh, hemocyl, it is divided into dorsal and pedal hemocyl. Dorsal hemocyl is based upon the position, it is dorsal in nature. Pedal means one which is associated with the foot. And these two hemocyl, it is separated by a muscular septum, a, a very uh, a distinct muscular wall, it separates the two hemocyl. Uh, excretory system, it is uh, poorly developed in uh, a plaque of forens, and uh, there is no nephridia. Instead, they have what is known as a porocyte. Okay, uh, porocytes, uh, actually the name say, it says poro means foot and cytes means cell. Okay, porocyte. It, uh, porocytes are present in the pericardial wall and uh, uh, that is believed to have this excretory function. Right. Now, nervous system, it is again uh, primitive and it is ladder-like uh, with a pair of cerebral ganglion, uh, two pairs of longitudinal nerve cords and transverse commissures. Okay. So, it is ladder-like. Right. Two nerve cords will be there and these two nerve cords will be connected by um, transverse commissures. Okay. And at the anterior end, there will be a pair of cerebral ganglia. I hope you got the picture. Okay. Now. Uh, most members of the aplacophorans, uh, uh, they are hermaphroditic, uh, that is both male and female reproductive system may be present in the same organism, but others are gonochoic. So there is uh, male individuals and uh, female individuals. Okay. Uh, so that is about the external features of a placophora. Now, uh, when we go into the classification, we can see that uh, the placophorans are divided into two subclasses. Okay, the, uh, this box shows the two subclasses, the ketodermomorpha and neomineomorpha. Okay, these two are the subclasses, ketodermomorpha and neomineomorpha are the two subclasses of aplacophora. Uh, the uh, um, ketodermomorpha, it is otherwise known as mud mole. Okay, they are known as mud mole and uh, uh, you can see how the name has come. Uh, wait, okay. So uh, it is keto means CT, derma means skin. Okay, and morpha, that is it, the uh, uh, outer coding. Okay, so that is how the name has come keto, uh, dermo, morpha. Right, and the, uh, uh, they are all gilled, and uh, you can see here. Um, they are balloon, the deposit feeding and gonochoric nature. There is an, yet another name for ketodermomorpha and that is codophobiata. Coda means tail and phobia means depression. Okay, so these are worm-like mollusks which range in size from 2 mm to 14 cm and they live in the vertical burrows of deep sea floor. As already mentioned, they are, they are all bottom dwelling uh, marine mollusks, and these uh, ketodermomorpha or the codophobiata, they are found in vertical burrows in deep sea floor. Okay, they make burrows and they live inside the burrows. Okay, uh, they, they feed on foraminiferans. They are dioecious in nature. You can see gonochoric forms, that is, male and female individuals are separate, and uh, uh, they are. Uh, they have skin like spicules uh, on their body wall and uh, they usually feed using radula. So, I already mentioned some group do have uh, radula as it. So, ketodermomorpha, they have radula and it is used for scraping the content. They lack a foot. They don't have a foot or they don't have a pedal groove. Why it is mentioned is because in the other subclass, all the members have a pedal groove. You can see here, this is a pedal means it is associated with foot. Right. So, that such a group is absent in the case of ketodermomorpha and this particular character, it distinguishes these two subclasses. That is, uh, ketodermomorpha doesn't have a foot and a pedal group, but on the other hand, neomomorpha do have a foot and a pedal group. Okay. And uh, ketodermomorpha, they possess a pair of tinnidium. We'll see it in detail when we discuss about the example. Okay. Now, neomomorpha, they are otherwise referred as solenogasters. Okay. Solenogaster, the name has come. Solen means channel and gaster means gut. Okay. So, uh, they are cylindrical mollusks. They lack a shell as 
every a plaque of her and lack a shell they crawl on their ventral food this is the ventral side which is visible so they are creeping organisms okay the, as we have already mentioned ketodermomorpha they are found in burrows isn't it? they are burrowing ones but here they are creeping ones they actually crawl on their ventral food and this ventral food it is modified into the pedal group okay this is a pedal group Okay, now so in the gastrus, as already mentioned, they lack a shell. Instead, their bodies are covered by the calculus spicules, as every a plaque of horn do have calculus spicules, uh, um, like covering their body. Uh, they are gillless; they don't have any true gills. Okay, in Clitoderma morpha, they do have a pair of tineidae, and it is present on the posterior end. While in the case of Neoneoma morpha or Sorinia gastrus, they don't have tineidae. Okay, they lack a tineidae, or they are, we can say, they are gillless. Okay, now uh, they are surface uh, dwellers, usually found on corals and other marine uh, what you call substrates. They are carnivorous. They feed on the uh, polyps. Okay, the nidarian polyps in on the in the uh, what you call the uh, corals. Okay, so they are found. On, they are surface uh, feeders, surface dwellers. And uh, usually found associated with corals, and they feed on the nidarian polyps in the uh, corals. Okay, now they are monoecious, that is hermaphroditic forms. So this is about the ketodermal morpha and neonemal morpha. We saw the characters of Aplacophora, and we also differentiated two subclasses: ketodermal morpha, or we call it as a corophoriata, and neonemal morpha, or the solenogaster. Okay, now moving on to the example. That is the ketoderma. The name says keto means theta, theta, right? Uh, and derma means skin. So there is calcareous spicules in the form of theta that is found all over skin. Okay, so you can see here all these are theta, and that is why the glistening uh, nature, the glow, what you call the uh, the shining nature. Okay, now these ketoderma, they are uh, they belong to obviously the name itself. It is very similar to the ketoderma morpha. So they belong to the the subclass ketoderma morpha. They are vermi form marine molluscs, which are covered with aragonite or the calcareous spicules, uh, which is produced by the mantle. They lack a shell. Uh, they are um, uh, cylindrical. You can see it is just one. Uh, like the the scale is one millimeter. It's almost like uh, just uh, uh, less than maybe like ten millimeters. Okay. They are uh, the mantle cavity. It is reduced to. You can see here. This is the structure. This is the anterior part and the posterior part. Right. The mantle cavity. It is reduced to an opening at the posterior end of the body. And into this mantle cavity, the animal it discharges waste from the alimentary canal. Right, and they are usually uh, uh, they are uh, uh, cylindrical burrows. They feed on. You can see they are found inside the burrows. Right, it is in, in the uh, deep sea sediment. Okay, and only the posterior part is visible outside. And they feed on the uh, in, 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 the detritus that is decomposing. Uh, Uh, particles in the sediment of deep seas and oceans. Okay, and as already seen, uh, mentioned, they do have tineidae or the gills. They are gilled groups. So, so uh, a pair of tineidae it is present in the mantle cavity. Here, here you can see mantle cavity it is restricted to posterior end, and a pair of tineidae it is present in the mantle cavity. Uh, as already mentioned, in the case of Ketoderma morpha, they uh, lack a foot. Uh, or a pedal groove, uh, but they do have a oral shield. Okay, circum oral shield. We can see around the mouth, which is clear sensory organ. And the most common species of Ketoderma is Ketoderma elegans. Okay, and it is commonly referred as Vizemba. Right. So this is about a plaque of.